finding this right already in progress. Gentleman started it up for me. We have got the Indian Chief and Dark Horse. And it looks like we've got some bars that are up a little higher here. Not your standard uh, Chief and handlebars, which are typically, I think right around here. I think, could be wrong. Could be right. So what a what an awesome note from uh, what an <laughs> sorry got interrupted there. Uh, what an awesome low growl from this exhaust. Wow. But this is a, an impressive machine all the way around. Uh, for someone my size, five foot six, about a thirty inch inseam. It's a bit of a reach, you know, I, I feel like my arms are a little bit wide for my size and uh, to reach the, the rear brake and the shifter peg, it's, it's a little bit of a stretch. Um, not too often do I say that, even on, uh, on the touring bikes that are available today, but, but it is a little bit of a stretch. And, uh, but nothing that's, that's overwhelming, I'll say that much, especially if you're somebody who is considering a, a touring bike. You know, this isn't going to be anything anything worse than any of your other tourers. So I love the, the matte red. It's got a kind of a metallic finish, but it, it's not like a super shiny color. Uh, and the, well, I'll list here at the, on the screen what different colors that the Chieftain Dark Horse comes in. But really, really like this color. If I was considering uh, a touring bike and an Indian touring bike at that, this would definitely be, uh, I got a little, storage there and it looks like you've got uh, a place to plug something and maybe navigation you've also got uh, some charge ports here that looks like nothing maybe an, another place for something that you can plug in but not not on this bike you got keyless start so no key to turn uh, just a fob I'm guessing that's going to activate once you're close enough to the bike and controls we've got uh, uh, we'll talk we'll get into those a little bit as we go on the left here we've got the horn <laughs> which is prominent kind of funny usually it's uh, secondary uh, but the, the horn is up here by the the high and low beam light control you got your turn signal and then your your uh, hands free or hands somewhat free uh, bent toggles for your your screen here up front I'm gonna try and sit up here guys so you guys don't feel so claustrophobic on this ride you guys can see a little bit better uh, something that I've always I've always experienced on rides with with bikes with big fairings in the front here is wind buffeting and this bike's getting me slap it slap at the top of the head with uh, some wind buffeting but nothing overwhelming nothing that I think that's gonna be any different than any other of your other touring bikes that have a, a fairing here up front some, some riders I know prefer like the, the road glide or for the Indian models, the, the Challenger, which has the fairing, uh, still has the fairing, but I think drops it a little bit lower. Maybe not so much obstructing your view, but, but I mean, speaking from experience here riding this cruiser, uh, this isn't really obstructing my view. Uh, it's gonna obstruct your view because you guys have a limited angle here on this video, but you're gonna be just fine on riding on this motorcycle. Uh, controls on the right here, we've got the power on and then the ignition or kill switch. You've got your controls for cruise control also on the right. And then, oh, this looks like uh, the angle for your, yeah. So you've got a manual, or excuse me, manual, automatic control for, for the windshield. And that's putting the wind eh, pretty much the same place, maybe a little higher on my head, but we're gonna lower it here just so that we can see a little bit better. But there's a ton of information at your fingertips and for your viewing pleasure here on this beautiful uh, display. You know, the sun is right above us. I'm guessing in any condition, you're gonna have an excellent view of this, this TFT, I believe, display. Uh, but aside from the screen, you also have your speedometer on the left, tachometer on the right. Um, you got your trip meter and then your gear at, at, on, on the right here as well. I think that's fourth gear, let's see. Yep, that's your gear. Put it back in the fourth. And then your field. And this is your miles to empty. I believe that 205 is your miles to empty. So that, that's a good trip on, on, on one tank. 
I'll give you the specifications of the gas tank here on the screen so you guys can see that, as well as probably the miles per gallon. Um, but yeah, I mean, you're gonna go for, for miles and miles on this bike without stopping. You've got these awesome floorboards that make the nice, nice and comfortable. Uh, these this handlebars, especially if you're a, a larger person or somebody who has longer arms or broader shoulders than I do, uh, it's gonna be an ideal riding position for you. For, even for me, it's, it's very comfortable. Uh, and, and then a plush seat. I mean, the Indian touring model seats, the, even the standard ones, are just really nice. I know people usually like to, to swap out their seats for third-party seats, uh, but I think you're gonna be happy, you know, because you're gonna drop a pretty penny, I'll put the, the MSRP, the, the typical sticker price for the Chieftain Dark Horse here on the screen for you, but you're spending a lot of money on this bike, so, you know, the, the fewer things that you can uh, drop money on when it comes to a motorcycle that's expensive as a, a touring bike like this, you know, the better. You know, as it's typical with a uh, bike with a uh, hanger, hanger handle bar, hanger handlebars. Uh, no obstruction here in these these mirrors. Very very nice. Uh, I know on some models you might see a, a smaller speaker here and then some uh, mirrors here, but these are, are are a good size, so you get a good viewing angle and plenty of. Uh, of unobstructed view of what's behind you. So uh, what I was saying before about uh, reaching for this brake and for the, the shifter peg, you know, it's actually it's more, I think, just something that you've got to get used to. Uh, because for me, I mean, now that, that I've been riding this motorcycle here for a little bit, it, it doesn't feel, it doesn't feel like as much of a stretch. So it's just, you know, it's we're talking about preference here. We're talking about uh, just getting comfortable with a new motorcycle. You know, if you've ridden with forward controls before, and you're a shorter person too, especially, this isn't gonna be much different for you. This is very, very reachable, very manageable uh, foot controls. All right, so uh, we're just getting to, you know, this is probably about the halfway point for this ride. Hopefully we're gonna get into some more windy roads to really test uh, how this bike does. Uh, you know, but when you're talking about a cruiser, what you're looking at is comfortability, your, your ability to be able to put your feet up here on these footboards, uh, slap it in cruise control, ride the highway forever. But at the same time, I know, I know for a fact that there are cruiser riders that also, you know, they want to test the performance of this bike. They want to see uh, how it does in the corners. You know, because when you're talking about a big heavy bike like this, and I'll have the, the weight specification for the Indian uh, Chieftain Dark Horse, when you're talking about a big heavy bike like this, uh, and you're in a windy mountain, mountain road, or just anywhere really, and you're struggling to lean the bike over, maybe you're a little intimidated by the weight, the size, the lean angles, uh, limitations, you know, that can get you into into a really bad place. All right, turning right here. Oh, <laughs> yes, sir. Oh my. So yeah, I stopped a little fast. You can probably hear the tire screech as I downshifted. But man, that is, that is nice. All right, here we go. It's kind of a blind turn here. I don't really like taking these too fast, but either way, yeah, that's, that feels really good in really good in a turn. All right, so when you got a, a big touring bike like this, air-cooled, big V-twin, I think this has got the 116 cc, excuse me, 116 cubic inch uh, Thunder Thunderstroke engine. I believe that's what it's called. If it's not, I'll have it on the screen here. Well, you got a big air-cooled engine like this, talking about getting a little warm under the seat. Uh, but, for, uh, you know, I can feel the heat, but it's not overwhelming. I, I It's not bad. You know, you can definitely get into uh, traffic, heavier traffic like we were. Um, it, wasn't a, it wasn't a thing, but maybe if it, if it becomes a thing, I'll let you know. 
Yeah, there's not not a lot to not like about the Chieftain Bob, the Chieftain Bobber, the Chieftain Dark Horse. You know, ABS here, uh, some excellent suspension. I'll have the brake specs as well as the suspension specs here on the screen for you. But great stopping power. Uh, you know, we had to stop fast there for somebody had to turn. Uh, suspension is really nice. You know, I, it's one of those things where uh, with a touring bike you worry about because of the suspension being so soft uh, that when you get into these turns, uh, you worry about maybe a low side crash or or uh, or having a soft suspension and not having the re you know the the, the rebound where, where you where you want it and. I don't have any problems riding a motorcycle like this. It feels good. Um, it's very confident here in the turns. Probably going a little too fast. Very confident in the turns and uh, just as comfortable as a bike's gonna get when you're talking about going long distances. Now, I'm gonna bring up the heat again. Because I can definitely feel it here on my left leg as that heat from the engine. But, I, you know, I'm, I'm, though I'm saying something about the heat, it's not an overwhelming. It's not like, a, oh boy, I've got to move away from this, this exhaust. Like you, maybe you would if you have, uh, if you're riding a sport bike that has like an exhaust right under your seat. It's, it's not a feeling like that. But something that just that I'm, that I'll, that I'll mention because, because it's there. And I'm trying to give you guys uh, a. A broad perspective of this motorcycle. So it's 92 today. Yesterday we had more, much more beautiful weather. It was in the 80s, even the low 80s, and we had a nice breeze. But today is less wind, uh, more heat, and again, that's probably a contributing factor factor too. To uh, my bun's getting a little toasted. All right. So as we come to the end of this ride, we're winding this thing down. This is the part of the video where I ask those of you who are watching who might have any questions regarding the Chieftain Dark Horse to leave those questions in the comments. I'll do my best to answer them. If I can't answer them, I'll do my best to uh, hunt down that answer for you. All right. Last of the turns here. We're really going to get into this. Oh, yeah. I mean, just, just for safety's purpose, especially when you come up over with these hills like this and you can't see what's coming. You know, you don't want to take these much faster than that, but I'm telling you, this bike could if, it, if you needed to, or if you had a less of a blind corner or, or blind turns. So yeah, now as we're riding here against the wind, it it's definitely, uh, the buffeting is getting worse. Uh, I haven't noticed as crosswinds come and go that that has had much of an effect riding here. But riding into the wind, I mean, uh, you know, buffeting is always going to be an issue when you ride a bike with a big fairing like this, as I've said before in this video. But riding directly into a wind, yeah, I mean, we're talking about uh, just just give me an IV with some ibuprofen because <laughs> holy crap, that is intense buffeting. All right, last thing that we'll talk about here as we close and we get, come towards the end of this ride is uh you know this is probably one of the first things i should talk about in a test ride video and usually is but on a touring bike i'm always more concerned with like the comfort uh the handleability of such a large machine uh is a clutch response throttle clutch excuse me clutch engagement and throttle response uh this this throttle you know when you really want to get on it and twist it it gives you all as much power as you need and more uh and what I've noticed is with the Harley uh, touring bikes, this clutch can get really uh, heavy, tight. It can feel really tight. And I'm not getting that from the big uh, Indian Cruiser. So that, that's another one of those things where, you know, if you haven't ridden a touring bike before, uh, and maybe you haven't experienced the, 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 the tightness in a clutch like a Harley Tour, uh, give give them both a shot. If you're maybe bouncing back and forth between getting an Indian Chieftain or a Challenger or Roadmaster uh, and the Sport Glide, Road Glide, and uh, Road King, uh, give the give the Indian a shot because that uh, 
Oh, the turn signal didn't cancel. Uh, the clutch feel, feels a, a, nicer to me. It feels nicer to me. Now guys, we've gotten to the end of this ride. If you liked this video, if you found it helpful, make sure you hit that thumbs up down there, which is the like button. And if you haven't already, smash that subscribe button. Guys, if you're out there riding, please be safe. Be kind to one another. My name is Eric. I'm that one guy. And I am out.